All right, so this is the Colbor W100, and it's probably the most interesting light that I've used in a while. It's such a small little light, um, and it's like the same size as like an iPhone. Like if we compare it side to side, it's about the same height, um, but it's definitely a lot thicker than an iPhone. But having a 100 watt light in this form factor is so cool because you're able to bring it pretty much anywhere that you want to, um, especially outdoor situations where you're shooting, um, you don't have a lot of light or you just wanna add a little bit more light, this is a great little addition to your lighting kit. So let's go over a quick spec rundown really quick. This is a 100 watt light. This one's the bicolor version, so it goes from 6500 Kelvin to 2700 Kelvin. You can control this light on your phone via the Colbor Studio app, and to power it, you can use either the AC adapter, it plugs right into the bottom right here, or it actually has a USB-C power option as well. And then in the box, you get the AC power cable along with the power brick, and then also you get this nice little loop thing. You also have the reflector and also a diffuser silicone gel thing for the reflector. The Colbert does also make accessories for this light specifically, and this softbox works with the W100. And obviously one of the first things that drew my attention to the light itself was this leather texture on the front here on the hand grip. Um, I really like this. It's like a nice feel on the hand. Gripping it like this it's so nice. And it's a really comfy way to hold the light. So I would hold the light like this with my thumb on the back of the light like that and just use it like that if I were doing it handheld. And then once you have the reflector cone on there, it's great to be able to put the light down flat on a surface like this and not have it fall over or tip over. You can even put it on its side like this once the reflector cone is on there and just kind of like rest the light onto the table or whatever surface you're working with. And I'm also seeing that there is a way for you to attach a neck strap onto this light uh, via these little loop holes right here. And then you can just hang it around your neck like this. But really what I wanna show you guys is how I would use a light like this. And so we're gonna use it as a key light for talking heads for this YouTube situation or whatever interview stuff that you wanna do. As a backlight, it can be, since it's so small and you have the quarter inch mounts on the bottom, you can mount it pretty much anywhere and get it up high as a backlight. And then also I'll take it outside and see how I'm able to use it outdoors, maybe in the sun uh, or maybe in the shaded areas in order to get some sort of exposure on whatever I'm shooting. All right, so uh, right now I'm using a different light to light my face. So we're gonna change it out for this light. All right, so let's get started. Unsh right now. So basically right now we're gonna shoot into this corner of the room and I'm going to move this piece of ultra bounce, which I have just attached onto a C-stand, onto an arm like that and just hung it on there. So nothing major. So what I wanna do is I'm going to bounce the W100, bounce it into this ultra bounce, and then that's gonna be my key light for the face. So we're gonna position this guy, this ultra bounce, out of the frame um, on this side of right here, this side. And now let us set up the shot. Here's my light stand. And so what I'm gonna do is I have a little attachment on top because this takes quarter inch mount on the bottom, two of them. So we're going to uh, screw it into the middle one right here. The ultra bounce is on this side of the frame because I want to use this window right here as motivation to bounce light into my face. This is the AC adapter, which I'm going to plug into the bottom of the light right here. Oh, Jesus. This thing is super bright. There's a knob right here in the back and this controls the brightness of the light. You can also control it via the Colbert Studio app, or you can press this button right here and there's presets of 0, 25, 75, uh, 50, 75, and then 100% brightness. So we're on 100% brightness, which is like the insane setting right here. <laughs> so we're going to press it. It's at 100 right now. If I press it once, it's gonna to go to zero, 25 after pressing it one more time, and then maybe it will go 50, and that's probably too much. And then to change color temperature, you twist this knob right here, and that's a really warm uh, light, that 2700 Kelvin. This is at 6500 Kelvin, which is the complete opposite, really cool light. And then also you can press the knob itself again to get to some of the preset color temperatures. The first one is 2700, 32, 43, 56, and then 6500 Kelvin. Let's do 56, because I'm trying to match the outdoor ambient light coming in. So this light right now is now bouncing into the ultra bounce that's off to my 
left. That's gonna act as my key light, and uh, this is gonna give me the right kind of exposure, hopefully. So right now, basically what I wanna do is make believe that this light right here is the light that's coming in from outside. So you're gonna have to play around with the brightness values and maybe the angle of it too. Where's my phone? And so I'm gonna use the Colbor Studio app uh, on my phone in order to adjust the brightness setting of the light. So let's go down to 0% so you guys can see what the uh, light is doing. And so this is what no lights look like in my office right now. On my camera, I'm set to 4650 Kelvin and I closed my aperture down to F5, ISO 800. So this is what the shot looks like with just the ambient light coming in from the window. It's a little dim. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the light on to, let's go to like 10% and see like how bright this is. This is already looking pretty bright, not gonna lie. Let me re-angle this. All right, do I like it? It's not bad. Uh, maybe I can get the light to wrap a little bit more over this side of my face. Right now the ultra bounce is about 45, wait, yeah, 45 degrees away from the camera, like this, 45 degrees, and we're gonna move it closer in so that's maybe like 20-ish degrees off to the side of the camera. So let's go ahead and do that. Now there, cool. So yeah, now the ultra bounce is now kind of touching the camera, which is like around that 20 degrees off to the side that I want. Yeah, definitely the light wraps way more around my face, which looks pretty good. Now, is the brightness believable? It feels a little too bright, no? 10%, 10% on a 100 watt light, pretty bright. Let me just see it on my monitor. Yeah, we'll just stick to 10% for now. I like how spread out the light is over my face. And what really helps amplify the output of the light is the hyper reflector cone thing that's attached to the front of the light. And then and obviously the ultra bounce is doing a lot to spread out that light and give it a softer look on my face. So yeah, this is not bad. Honestly, I wasn't expecting much from a 100 watt light because it's a relatively smaller light than what I'm used to. But in small rooms like this, if you were doing like an interview setup in a smaller office space like mine, a smaller light actually would work really well because it's much more portable. You can set things up really fast versus like super heavy lights. Bigger lights are much uh, heavier and cumbersome to move around, but this pocket style, this iPhone style of light. It's actually really fast. And then really quick, I just, I'm just gonna try attaching this softbox onto there and see how it will look, what the differences are. So we're gonna do that really quick. Okay. Oh, by the way, the, uh, the softbox comes with this little carrying case, it comes with this honeycomb grid and also this little diffuser material. So that's what the softbox style looks like. And then maybe we'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. I'm pretty sure what I'm gonna like is the uh, the bounce, the bigger bounce um, off the ultra bounce because the softbox is a little bit smaller than the uh, the four by four ultra bounce frame that I have. It's naturally going to make the light a little bit less soft. You're gonna get a lot more harder shadows like you can see right now on my face, which is fine for stuff like social media stuff. If I was doing a TikTok video, this type of lighting would be like, would be pretty good. Something like this is totally fine for a key light for either YouTube stuff that I'm doing or uh, talking head stuff for interviews. All right, next situation, I'm going to use this window as motivation for some sort of like top light uh, on the top of my head. Um, and so let's run through it. We're gonna take off this softbox because I don't think we're gonna be needing this softbox at all. For a top light to mimic sunlight, we're gonna need a hard source of light. We're gonna choose something that matches the same quality of light that's coming in from the sun. I'm gonna use the little cone reflector. And then we're gonna mount it onto a C-stand that has a little boom arm extension thing. So the light's gonna go to the front of the arm right here, and then that's gonna hang right above me somewhere up there. Okay. Probably should be. And then I have this uh, junior pin adapter to the quarter inch adapter on top. And this goes on top of the head right there. Like that. And then maybe like, we're gonna go. We're gonna mount it onto this quarter inch mount right here. And I'm just gonna, now we're gonna get this whole thing out of frame. Move it. All right. So something else that I wanna do is control where the light is gonna hit uh, on the top of my head. Um, and in order to do that, usually I would use something like a barn doors, but because this barn doors is usually reserved for bigger reflectors, this will not fit onto the smaller cone thing right there. So what I think I'm gonna do is use black wrap, which is just cine foil, it's just like aluminum wrap black or aluminum foil. And we're going to just tape it around the cone reflector and see how it works. All right, so this is what it kind of looks like. Hopefully it works. Um, yeah, hopefully it works. <laughs> and we're going to straighten. Okay, where is the light right now? 
Ooh, right there. Okay, so I finally set up a shot. So we have the motivation uh, light out the window right there uh, for this top light that I have. And then I have another key light off to that side. It's another Cold War CL220R. So we're gonna have that off to the side. That's gonna be the key light, uh, which is a little bit too bright right now, I think. Let's go 60%, uh, we'll set it right there. Now this top light right here, if I pan up, you can see where it's at. And I am sitting right, what, too far, right underneath the light. I don't want to be too far back because now the light doesn't look realistic, right? Like now the light looks like it's somewhere right above me when it shouldn't be. It should be behind me. So I'm going to move myself until only my shoulders are lit by the top light. So now it kind of looks more like the light is coming from the window itself. So right now the light is at 100% power. Let's bring it down to like 14, 15. Let's go 20 now. Somewhere around like 20, 30%. We're going to turn off the light. Ooh, what a difference. Top light is off right now. We're gonna turn it back on. Oh my God. Like it's so subtle, but like it makes a huge difference. What? Yo, that's kind of sick. So I turned it up to 50% right now. That looks like it's too bright. It looks like I'm far away enough from the window where the light shouldn't be this bright hitting my shoulders. So 50% is a little too bright. It looks a little bit unrealistic, if you ask me. If my body was like way closer to the window, right? Like if I was like right up to the window, then maybe the 75% or the 50% brightness on the top light makes sense. But since you can tell that I'm further away from the window, it doesn't really make sense that the light is that bright. So let's turn it down back to like 25%. And one of the great things about having such a small light like the W100 is that it's so portable and you're able to mount it literally anywhere that you want. And being able to add different uh, accessories on the front of it, uh, like the hyper reflector cone on top, it's super useful to have a small light like that that's also really powerful. All right, we are outside. Uh, we're gonna test how powerful this light is, 100 watt light. We're gonna see how well it can work in an outdoor, somewhat outdoor uh, environment. Right now I'm underneath my patio area and it's kind of cloudy, kind of sunny. We're gonna set up a talking head type of thing uh, with this light and we're gonna see how well it performs. So I think main key light is gonna be this side right here because I want uh, most of the light, ambient lights coming in from this side. The wall is on this side, so there should be no light coming in from there. So we're gonna use this side um, as the key side. Okay. Striking this light. So let's see if we're able to get enough level onto my face. Like. Okay, so this is what ambient sunlight looks like right now on my face. It's not bad, I'm gonna turn on the light that we have. It's doing a little bit. I'm gonna see if I can pull it in closer. So we're gonna turn off the light, turn it back on. Oh, that's not bad. It's actually doing something. Okay, I'm actually kind of surprised that it's actually giving some sort of level onto my face. Yeah. Well, now this light is like right up against me. Here's camera, here's the bounce, and then this is the light, and then I'm like right next to it. So as you can tell, it's you have to get this light um, pretty close to my face because it's only a 100 watt light. Um, but you can already see that it's it's still doing like a lot to my face. Like it's pretty believable and it matches, it blends in with the uh, the background light, the ambient that I'm getting. If you weren't doing like a YouTube talking head, if it was like an interview or like some sort of scene that you're shooting, um, this would be kind of like how the person would be sitting. It's not bad, not bad. Um, and then as far as the uh, camera settings go, we are at four stop ND and then 800 ISO F 5.0 and then 4650 Kelvin. All right, so ultimately I think that the Cold War W100 is really gonna be ideal for people who are live streamers, uh, content creators who are doing things for social media, something that they can easily set up. This light is extremely portable. You can take it pretty much anywhere. I love this handheld design. You can have someone hand holding a light for you if you needed to. And most importantly, it outputs a lot of light. It's ideal for things like uh, your camera for just putting it in front of your face um, and then just going live or you know just shooting any type of social media content and it's really light like a lot of these bigger lights that output more power 
they're heavier uh, and you need a special case to take it with you uh, when you're shooting. But with something like this, you're able to just throw it in your backpack or put it in a camera bag or put it in your back pocket if your pockets are big enough. And you're able to get a lot of light from a small little light like this. Being able to put it on a light stand really quickly because of the threaded mounts on the bottom, super key, you can mount it on top of your desk. And especially if you pair it with a softbox like the BP30 that is specifically made for this W100, you're gonna get really soft looking light and it's gonna look really good. All right, but that's it. Let me know if you have any other questions in the comments below. If you like this video, hit the like button. Uh, make sure to subscribe.